Hi, my name is John and this is Moments with John. Many of you who have been watching some of the videos that I've been making know that I've been talking a lot about standing firm in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ among difficult times that we've been experiencing, especially during the last three or four months. But today I kind of made me think of something that is in the book of Jude. But I'd like to read a few verses from the book of Jude, beginning in verse 3. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation that we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once entrusted to the saints. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of our Lord into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. So here in, um, in Jude, he was going to talk about this great salvation that the Lord has given us, and I have several messages about that. But he decided to change what he was going to say. Because certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ into a license for morality and deny our Lord Jesus Christ. And so a lot of the things that I have seen recently be it in the news or in Facebook or other social media stuff, there's, it would be very easy to see a lot of this as an attack on our faith and a belittling of the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ and some of the things that we stand strong with based on what the Bible says about certain subjects. And so I just felt that the Lord was leading me to talk and focus more in on, on this. The importance of standing firm in face of a lot of opposition and even ridicule or people making fun of what we believe in. I'd like to also, when as thinking about that and putting that into context, think of 1 Peter beginning at chapter 3 verse 14. Even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. So as I talk about some persecution and some people belittling, belittling what we say, and maybe even worse suffering as time goes along, it's always important to remember, as I mentioned in other videos, even if you suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your heart, set apart Christ as your Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. So again, he talks about suffering, but he also talks about being prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope that you have. And so we always need to be able to do that, to be grounded in the word of God, to be grounded in our faith, to be able to share with others the reason that we have, of the faith that we have, especially, and Peter is putting this in the context of suffering and, and persecution and people making fun of us. But a very important aspect of what he's saying, but do this with gentleness and respect. Pastor Eric shared this several times during, during the last few weeks, of we need to be careful of how we respond to others or react to others. With that we must not do it with mean-spiritedness, but we need to do it with love. And as Peter says, but do this all with gentleness and respect. A number of years ago, I learned the difference between reacting and responding. Reacting, I understood, was when we react without thinking, which comes from our, our sin nature, which comes from our human nature, which comes from our, our self, almost our unredeemed self. And we just react, you know, or how you would react almost anybody believe in Jesus or not. But responding, responding is when we respond to others via our faith, running it through the grid and filter of our faith in Jesus Christ. What would Jesus say? What would Jesus do in this situation? So let us respond to others with gentleness and respect. And as we begin to deal with a lot of the criticism and opposition of, of the things that we believe and stand firm with, we need to make sure that whatever we say or whatever we do it is based on what the Bible says, on the truth. We must cling to the truth. We must cling to our faith. 
And so in that vein, I'd like to share it with you from 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now from infancy, you have known the Holy Scriptures. What's he say about the Holy Scriptures? Which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed. It's God-breathed. It's, it's the source of truth. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, cannot emphasize enough the importance of knowing the scriptures, of basing our ideas of reality, our ideas of what the truth is, on the Holy Scriptures. It is God-breathed, God-led in the writing of the scriptures. And so I'd like to share some more verses that the Bible says about standing firm in our faith. Especially these verses focus on the idea of in the midst of hard times, in the midst of persecution, in the midst of people making fun of what we believe in, belittling it, that we need to stand firm. But again, as we re respond to others, let us respond with gentleness and love and humility. But in any case, we need to stand firm and not be blown by the wind this way and that way. Matthew 24, beginning at verse 9, he says, Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Jesus just piles it on right there. Some of the things are, are going to happen to us and may have already started happening to us. Many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. That's why he's, he's saying, stand firm. Stand firm with me. Know the truth. Know my word. Know that I am with you and that I will never abandon you. That I can give you inner joy, inner peace, hope, encouragement, and that someday you will be with me forever and ever. So don't fall away. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. They will obviously deceive people that don't really know the Lord, but they will also try to deceive people that know the Lord and get us to believe half-truths or maybe direct lies against the Lord. Even Christians will get kind of like that illustration of, of the frog in, in the water. You put the frog in boiling or hot water, he'll jump right out. But if you put the frog in room temperature water and then raise the heat little by little, the frog will get used to of the change of temperature, accommodate himself, and eventually die. And Paul says, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But many, it says, in the end, their love will grow cold. They will begin to cling to the half-truths and the lies and the sins and accommodate the sins in their lives. And in verse 13, 24, 13, Jesus says, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And so let us stand firm. Again, the only way that we can stand firm is by the power of the Holy Spirit living with us and God helping us. And 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Again, there's a lot of things that can move us. There's a lot of things that we're trying to move the people in Corinth when Paul wrote this and so many other of the other churches like Jude saying there's a lot of people going to come in and try to deceive you. It's happening in Corinth. It was happening in Ephesus. It was happening in Colossae. It was happening among the Philippians. People always trying to to change the truth and to put in the half lies and sometimes just direct sin. But Paul says, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Um, I've shared a couple of, of the other videos. One is called Blaming God. Another one is called Why Is There Suffering in the World? And a lot of people will make fun of us. How can you believe in God? How can you believe in a God that lets this happen, lets, lets that happen, and doesn't intervene, and, and all these children dying, and all these different things? And the, because they don't understand about there's another kingdom going on in this world, kingdom of this world, the kingdom of Satan, how the king, uh, uh, Satan has a lot of, of sway going on in this world. In fact, I mentioned in a previous video of, of Luke 4, during the temptation where the devil says the kingdoms of the world 
are mine. They're sold into sin. They're, they are mine, and I have a lot of influence on them. But, but those of us who know the scriptures know these things, but people don't really know the scriptures. There's so many times where people are always blaming God and the God this and God that, but they never mention Satan. And the unbelievers and the believers never make, mention the, a, a role of Satan. And those of us who know the scriptures know that that's important to understand that. And I have a number, number of videos which talk about that. In 2 Corinthians 1, 7, Paul says, And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so you also share in our comfort. So obviously, as I mentioned in previous videos, Paul suffered so much so he could share the word of God with other people. And he was also very empathetic for many of the people he was writing to. They were also suffering. So he says, as you share in our sufferings, you also share in our comfort. God gives us comfort. He gives us hope. He gives us strength. He gives us encouragement. He never abandoned us. He's always with us. Passage of scripture that talks the most about some of the opposition that we're facing and the importance of standing firm is found in Ephesians 6.10 and following. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Again, we need his mighty power. We cannot face the things that Paul is about to mention in this passage of scripture on our own strength because we want to, because we are trying hard. It just won't work. We'll fall away. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Again, a lot of the things that we're facing you know, people who are so against the Lord are basically pawns of the devil. The devil is behind these things. It's his schemes, as Paul is about ready to say. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. You know, those people that criticize us, the people that, that seem to be evil in this world, they're taking the world farther farther away from the Lord. They're, our struggle is not against them, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And again, such things in our own strength, our own power, our own flesh, we'll never be able to defeat something like that. It's only by God's power putting on his armor, as it says. Therefore, Paul says, put on the full armor of God so that when this day of evil comes and all these things are piling on to us, all these epidemics and all this unrest, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Again, that's one of the things I'm trying to focus on in this message is the importance of the truth, of knowing the truth, of getting that truth from the scriptures and sharing that truth in love and respect and gentleness but standing firm with that truth and resisting all attempts to water it down. With the breastplate of righteousness in place, stand with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take up the shield of faith. Again, standing firm in our faith, knowing what we believe, knowing why we believe it, knowing the scriptures that that talk about our faith and, and the truth of God. Because again, now these arrows, distinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one, they're, they're, they seem to be, in these days, coming at us more and more, people who are in opposition to the truth that we believe. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Again, the word of God is our basis. That's the basis of our truth. All truth is based on what God says and what the word of God says. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Again, without praying to the Lord, without praying for others, we have no chance in this spiritual battle that we are facing. In Philippians 1.27, Paul says, Whatever happens, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Therefore, whether I come to see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit contending as one person for the faith of the gospel. We're going to have to contend for our faith. We have to be able to give that reasonable answer and know what we believe and why we believe it. Not only for others, but for ourselves. When, all the, when some of those doubts enter, and is there really a God? Is this really all true? That we'll be able to stand firm without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. And in 2.4, he says, I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. 
That's one of the big things you hear today, fine-sounding arguments, intellectual arguments that people try to use to diminish our faith, to introduce half-truths, to say what we believe in, in creation or in the Lord is just ridiculous. Fairy tales, fine-sounding arguments, not only of that, but trying fine-sounding arguments to help us to be more accustomed to sin and to let it in. For though I am absent from you in the body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ Jesus is. So Paul continues to encourage them, don't give in to these fine-sounding arguments of half-truths and lies and accommodation of sin. Be firm in your faith in Lord Jesus Christ, because the Lord's coming is near. And 1 Peter, another basic verse when it comes to dealing with these issues, beginning at 1 Peter 5 eight, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Again, our, our battle is not against the people that are criticizing us, the people that are spreading all these different lies, the people that are getting our, our nation and more and more people away from the Lord. We're not struggling against them. We're struggling against the devil who's looking to whom he can devour who he can make their faith less, make them doubt, make them turn away from the Lord. That's what, what we need to resist him, Paul says. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. So the sufferings that we experience are nothing novel, as I mentioned in my previous videos. Jesus, Paul, the disciples, 11 of the 12 disciples were martyred in awful ways. And, and the God of grace, continues in 1 Peter, and the God of grace who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. So again, it's only the Lord that can truly restore us and make us strong, firm, and steadfast by the power of his Holy Spirit. To him be... Glory and power and honor forever. Amen. When we're talking about contending for our faith, about knowing this truth, clinging to the truth, standing strong with the truth, we need a lot of wisdom. Because, again, it says fine-sounding arguments, people who belittle our faith, people who make us doubt, people who are blaming God, and how can you believe in such a God? We need a lot of wisdom to know how to respond and know how to stand firm. And of course, we also need wisdom, as I mentioned, to respond to these accusations with love and gentleness and love and respect. So this is a prayer that Paul shares for the people who are facing similar situation. In Ephesians 1, 17. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you are called, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for those of us who believe. Well, wow, Paul has quite the prayer. As I, as I said, it's real important that we receive prayers, that we pray to the Lord for strength and pray for others in the midst of this, pray for other believers. But he prays that God gives you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that your heart may be enlightened. And finally, James, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask of God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But no matter what's going on, may we stand firm in our faith, basing what we believe on in the scripture, standing firm, and be able to give that reasonable response to our faith. Again, like I, I'm saying, not only to others, but to ourselves when doubts enter. And is there, is there really a God? Is he really in control? Is, or why is this happening? Why is that happening? Let us stand firm in our faith, basing our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ and not accepting half-truth and getting accommodating sins of the world that so many of the world are saying this is, this is no longer a sin that we might stand firm. But in all of this, continue to express our love and being a light in the midst of all this darkness knowing that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, against normal people, but is against the devil and all these powers that are aligned with the devil, trying to belittle our faith, trying to break down the foundations of our faith. 
but to stand firm with the Lord, praying to him, trusting in, in his Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and strength in the middle of everything that's going on. Thank you very much.